231, Public Laws, 1975, he advised that notice of this meeting was made by posting on the bulletin board at Town Hall and serving the officially designated newspapers a notice stating that this meeting would take place at the Town Hall at 7.30 p.m. today, Tuesday, January 16th. Would you all please rise and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. relatively regularly you see we've um, moved around a little bit and that is so we can all have a different perspective <laughs> okay um, before we move to approve the agenda i'd like to move one item of old business the street name to immediately following our consideration of the consent agenda resolutions I did tell Jamie that I would move it to the uh, after the public session, uh, after public comment, but uh, it was today. Um, may I, with that change, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as revised? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Reports. So, Mr. Holmesy, do you have a report? Good evening. Okay. Is ready? No. Ms. Lieberberg. No reports. Ms. Rosenberg? My report is that I'm on the uh, liaison to the Downtown Millburn Development Authority, and we had a meeting last week which was very, very robustly attended at the library, and I'm glad that we got good feedback. Um, the DMDA has been under the microscope as of late in terms of uh, merchants and possibly property owners questioning their new budget, uh, proposed budget, and things like that. They are supposed to come to us. Just to give a little background, there was an ordinance in 1992 establishing a business improvement district. And the purpose of that is when business improvement districts became uh, started, we were one of the first ones to do that, it was to give the business improvement district an area, a scope, name the streets that it was and to assess each property commercial property owner and use that money to fund projects to promote and enhance economic vitality improve, improve the visual appearance in town for years according to what i've learned there were not a lot of active members in this organization and they sort of ran on an ad hoc basis Recently, they have tried to formalize, hire a full-time executive director, and get moving. Uh, the board is energized and engaged, and although they were supposed to come with a, by their bylaws to us in the fall with a budget, have not yet done so. Um, it was pulled from the meeting tonight, I think, to button up what, what needs to be presented to us. So we are going to have to make a decision at some point, hopefully or soon, whether we approve of the budget and continue funding as requested. Um, the budget roughly is around $250,000. And, and we're open, obviously, in public session to hearing from property owners and others. But that was an interesting meeting just to, to understand more about how the DMDA works and, and what it's supposed to do and whether people think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, today, Alex and I went to the joint meeting in New Providence, which is the joint 911 system, and they're in really good shape. They have a full staff and a really good staff. They only lost one person who went after the police academy, so everyone's very happy there. The new phone system is up and running to um, help facilitate the new enhanced 911. Next gen, which would be you can do um, text 911. Alex is now the new um, board chairman. Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> and Brian Gelfelder, our um, chief of police, is one of the board uh, vice chairs. Milburn will be testing the new radios. And actually, things are actually going very well there. So, can I ask a question? Sure. One of the concerns was learning our addresses better. Has that occurred? Yes. Yeah, so Alex is going to say there's something called, what you call that? Geocoding. 
geocoders, when you call and say, I'm at the Rackets Club, we used to call our dispatch, well, our cops knew where the Rackets Club was and our EMS was. So that is in a system now. So when someone says a specific Rackets Club or Canoeber Country Club, they will know what that means. So that has improved a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. There was a rec commission meeting uh, this past week, but I'm going to withhold the report on it because we're still gathering information on a proposal to uh, work with East Orange on a new field off Parsonage Hill Road. There have been some, a volley of exchanges. We're waiting for a response on something. And so I'd rather have a more exhaustive report, which we expect to get that information by the time for the next meeting. Um, may I ask? So I have the minutes from December when Tillotson was at, and you weren't there yet, so Robert's not here to report. And there was something that was up in the minutes that concerned me. I'd like to just bring it up to the public. Um, one of the commissioners, Mr. Layton, brought up discussion about the idea of possibly redeveloping the Par 3 and using it for multiple lit turf fields and athletic building and other possible recreation uses. I would be interested to see where that moves. I think people, I have golfed at the part three, I think people describe it as a gem in Milburn. And it's hilly, it's muddy, it's always soggy. I just can't imagine the environmental impact, the impact to the houses on Harvey Drive and Canoebrook who would align with that, like what that means and how far the Rec Commission has permission to pursue that into actually making that happen. Well, having been on the Rec Commission, having been the Rec Commission liaison when I was on the Board of Education for many years, that, has, that idea has been floated for at least nine years. Has it? And uh, nothing's ever been done. Some of the reasons that you advanced, mostly given the topography of that area. While it was brought up to conclude that uh, discussion at the last meeting, which would have been part of my report, I'll report on it now, there is no present movement to convert any part of the far three into a field, particularly with lights, or particularly with the turf fields. So the far three, uh, there's no threat at present moment, at least among the commission, to uh, of that commission to uh, change the far three to any part of a turf field. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no report tonight, Mayor. Mr. McDonald. Oh yeah, just um, wanted to remind everybody that um, one, uh, the township allows for residents to uh, do online inspection requests through its SDL portal on its website. Uh, we started it uh, softly uh, a few months ago, but certainly want to make people aware of it. It's uh, it's obviously a, a, an easier process. Uh, you don't have to call the office. You can simply go online and set up an inspection uh, for your property for open permits. Um, and also just a reminder that uh, the township does now run a Facebook page um, and uh, like everybody to follow us. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of reports. One is the uh, South Mountain and Washington Sections Traffic Ad Hoc Committee met four times last year and the current recommendations of that committee is to have a four-way stop at the intersection of Spring and Church in the Washington section, as well as a four-way stop at the intersection of Spring Street and Rector Street. And if there's going to be no, and maybe we'll talk about this later, but if there will be no objections as to that, we'll, we'll ask for a, um, an ordinance to allow that to happen. In addition, their, the recommendation is to have two speed bumps or humps, whatever they're called, on Washington, uh, on Whittingham Terrace between Ridgewood Road and Milburn Avenue uh, by Taylor Park. And with respect to the right on red at Ridgewood off of Maine that we discussed last year, their recommendation is to do a trial basis of um, 7 a.m. to 7 to 9 a.m. and 2 to 4 p.m. and see how that works. So we're going to suggest that we do that as well. Secondly, today we found out, or this week we found out, that the New Jersey, did you have a question? Yes, 7 to 9 and 4 to 6. Two to 4. Two to four. <coughs> Are those basically the same hours as the crossing guards? Generally. Right. For school crossing. Correct. Right. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, we also just found out this week that the New Jersey DEP is recommending um, acceptance of Milburn as a certified local government um, 
which would allow us to apply for federal, <coughs> federal historic preservation fund matching grants, which are available only to certified local governments. It was an application we recently made. And the recommendation still has to be submitted to and approved by the National Park Services, which we hope will, uh, that we hope will be successful. <coughs> it, unless you travel around in historic preservation circles or something, you wouldn't know necessarily, but that's a big deal. It's not easily achieved. Uh, there's an extensive review that the state undertook to see that your ordinance that pertains to historic preservation was up to snuff, and uh, there will be, as you have indicated, the resulting ability to get funds for uh, various historic purposes that results from it. Thank you. Okay, minutes. We're going to, uh, may I have a motion to approve the October 17th, 2017 regular township committee minutes? So moved. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And one abstention. Right? Yes. And I have a motion to approve the October 17, 2017 Special Township Committee Minutes. So moved. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? One abstention. And I have a motion to approve the November 13, 2017 Regular Township Committee Minutes. So moved. And I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One abstention. Thank you. Okay, we have a presentation by the Environmental Commission. Yes? Want to come up? Also, we um, um, had comments back from engineering, zoning, and the building departments, and they um, improved it and um, um, stand by it and think that it will help them do their job more easily. Did, did you incorporate their comments into the proposed resolution? Yes, they are incorporated. Okay, so I will read it. Um, it's a verification of as-built lot coverage and building height in accordance with zoning requirements for new building construction projects in Milburn Township. Whereas the Environmental Commission of the Township of Milburn is committed to ensuring that new building construction projects, which result in new impervious surfaces and new building heights, do not exceed the zoning restrictions for total lot coverage and maximum building height. And whereas the Commission recognizes that increases in impervious lot coverage will result in additional stormwater runoff conditions that can adversely affect stormwater runoff patterns on neighboring properties, as well as the overall capacity of nearby stormwater collection systems for the project site. And whereas the Commission also acknowledges that increased stormwater runoff can cause additional soil erosion to the environment, and may increase the potential for flooding on neighborhood <coughs> properties, neighboring properties. And whereas the Commission can also, also acknowledges that building height exceedance can adversely affect the scale of the surrounding community, as well as access to light and air for adjacent properties. And whereas currently there is no mandatory enforcement mechanism for verifying that zoning requirements, including total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height are not being exceeded during construction of new building projects. And whereas the Commission wishes that compliance be verified for total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height for all, all new building construction projects, and that the zoning calculation form be revised and resubmitted reflecting the asphalt condition. 
Now, therefore be it resolved by the Commission that the Township of Milburn adopt this policy specified in the following clauses. That the Township of Milburn develop a standardized verification process for determining compliance with total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height involving new building construction projects as a precondition for obtaining a certificate of occupancy. And that the Township of Milburn requires an as built survey of the newly constructed building that shows total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and certified ridge height to be prepared by a New Jersey licensed land surveyor, noting that the ridge height certification be done at the time the building framing is complete so that it can be corrected if too high. And that the Township of Milburn should also stipulate in the Township Land Development Ordinances that a New Jersey licensed engineer or architect certify via a revised zoning calculation form whether or not the new building construction project complies with the total lot coverage, building coverage, accessory use coverage, and maximum building height based on the information obtained from an as-built survey of the newly constructed building, driveway, rocks, patio deck, etc. And be it further resolved that the commission advises and respectfully suggests that the mayor and township committee of the township of Milburn show their support for the verification of as-built lot coverage and building height in accordance with the township zoning requirements for new building construction projects by adopting resolutions or amending the township land development ordinances embodying principles discussed here within. And it was passed by the Environmental Commission January 10, 2017. Um, I have the names of people if you'd like to hear them. Um, it was um, Rick Benz, myself, Jennifer Duckworth, Beth Saul, Lisa Chernofsky Singer, Linda Silver, Faye Key, and David Emma. Um, it was just passed, oh, it was passed, it was passed, passed last year. Right. Yeah, and then it was okay. presented to the building department and everyone for comments and advice. And, okay. Yeah. So, and what was the reason that this um, resolution has come before you? Was there a concern that new builders have not been, um, have been building beyond what was permitted? I um, believe so, yes. Yes? Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. Some questions? Um, so, how will this be enforced? We have one inspector in town. Right. So, how will this process move forward of enforcing that one? This is for after the framing has gone up? Right. Okay. So. They want it done before the um, building is enclosed while mm -hmm. it's still easily changed mm -hmm. so that it can be surveyed at that time. So, the surveyor will come and he will calculate the height of the building and, and the lot coverage. And he will have document that will show that. And then there will also be, there will revise this in the <coughs> ordinance form, which I have a copy here, um, if you'd like to see it. Um, and then the, the owner will not get a certificate of occupancy until um, this form is corrected. So this is part to understand. A CO happens after the building is complete and you want to move in? Or just, because what happens if after it's framed, it misses this step and somehow you mean it's not inspected? Or? Right. You only have one inspector. So how, I'm just asking, how is this process going to be watched over? Now, now you ask maybe a clarifying question? Yeah. So is the, is the concept that, and what you're really talking about is the building height, because that's really the, the framing issue, right? Right. Or it so may have exceeded okay. um, the footprint, right? Okay. The survey so, for the so, footprint. So that would be then done before there or before a framing inspection could be passed. Is that when that would happen? I don't know, maybe someone from the audience here. Do you know Michael? Um, so, I mean, that's something that you can open to debate. But, um, I mean, you know, there is a. Um, Mr. Harris, would you like to come up yeah. to the mic? <laughs> 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 would you like to see the zoning calculation form? I don't know if I would ever see it very well. Can you turn the volume up on the speaker because it's hard to hear the speaker? On this microphone out there? Yeah. 
we have to just get closer to the microphone. Yeah, exactly. So there is a requirement where the, um, the, the builder has to measure the setback for the footprint of the building before the training starts. I don't know if that answers your question. There is already a requirement for that. So I'm asking, so if we pass this ordinance, the idea is to make sure that the builder has not exceeded the footprint or the height of what he was um, contracted to do. Right. So if he does, the remedy is that he will be asked to take down the framing and they get re-inspected. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'm saying is, so by knocking on a CO, doesn't a CO, I haven't built in the past, come at the end so you can move in? Right, but I mean, this is one step in the process. This is basically saying you still have to pass this, this point, this step. In this interim step. Interim step. Interim this step. is way in the beginning. This is before yeah. they've closed the wall. Sure, you've so, got to do it. Right, so our one inspector in town will get the survey from this independent New Jersey licensed surveyor. Mm -hmm. So, and the builder has to pay for that. That's his responsibility. Yes. When you're yeah, of course, but when you say on the one inspector, who are you talking about? Jerry. Okay. Building right. inspector. Building inspector. Well, he wouldn't inspect anything. Right, but this is an additional duty that he will now have to do. I don't know. I'm, so I'm asking. I'm just trying to clarify the process with this little form. <coughs> Be part of his people, be part of the builder's people. Right. I think if they know that they're going to be instructed afterwards, they will probably do it correctly the first time because they don't want the expense of changing things. Right. Just to help. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at the series of papers that's been provided to us for this, and there's sort of something that looks like a red line, but it's handwritten. My question is what's different in this resolution in terms of? practice that doesn't already exist with regard to the process. Certification by the engineer or architect based on the actual survey. You're certifying that the property meets all the requirements. But wouldn't a CFO uh, on wouldn't that be a de facto certification, mm -hmm. albeit at a later point? They don't check they don't check for these things. They don't check for these things. So you're saying that the building inspector at the CFO or at other points not has not been complying with existing ordinances. I don't know if that's, their, if that's part of their jurisdiction. But the, this is a, there, is a, there is a requirement for new building projects to have an ad built survey. But that's, that's where it stops. Nobody looks at the data, you know, analyzes the data and enforces that data. This would put the enforcement mechanism in the system. Basically saying that the, the licensed land surveyor will survey the property for height and for coverage, and then it will be certified using the new zoning form by a licensed engineer and architect. So we'll okay. have to redo the zoning before we I got it. Okay, I understand that point. So, other than uh, possible delay caused by getting this uh, certification at this point, which may increase cost to the homeowner or builder. Is there anything in this resolution, in your judgment, that increased cost to the builder or home? I mean, the builder would probably incur, it's roughly, eventually get the $1,500 additional cost for the survey and certification. Right. Yeah. And as far as time is a concern, I don't think that's an issue. Well, time is a concern, but the so there's an extra tax on, on a homeowner to comply with this in the, in the range of $1,500. I'm full but however, that's something that you'll, that person will need when they sell the house later. So it's not a bad thing to have. But it protects the town, protecting the neighborhood yeah. and the environment. When you say homeowner, because it's not, it's only for new construction. I understand. Okay. I, understand. I wanted to, wanted to clarify that this is an extra assessment on those building homes um, in terms of delay and actual cost that needs to be considered when we're, mm -hmm. if this resolution is considered by the town. Any other questions? Okay. So, um, any thoughts? Um, I think it's a good added protection for the town, mm -hmm. for the neighborhoods, for the environment. And I can see why the Environmental Commission started this process. If it was not in our zoning laws already, that is an extra added protection. Mm -hmm. Is there any need to consult the zoning board? The, um, the engineering department and the building department has been 
consulted already. And this isn't really going to impact the zoning board at all. It's really going to impact the building department. Mm -hmm. so it's all considered as an I'd like to learn from the building department the extent to which it believes it has not been adequately uh, examined or reviewing the building sites, which has caused the need for the baby drill. But I don't necessarily accept that there hasn't been compliance with our existing laws. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we table this until the second meeting in February? Give you time to talk to the building department. Well, I'm not going to personally investigate that. I would ask the building department to present any data it has okay. or any information that it has. Okay, so we will talk to the building department and come back, but then we'll revisit this at the uh, second meeting in February. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And all right. Um, George. Good evening. Um, just one announcement. The uh, Deer Management Program began today. Um, that will take place on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, uh, in January in South Mountain Reservation. Um, there will be a makeup date February 1st for inclement weather. Um, the reservation will be closed, obviously, for safety reasons. Um, I can trust, but the zoo will reopen as well as the crews. Um, and also, you know, we're expecting some uh, bad weather tonight and tomorrow. So the county's available should the town need assistance in uh, you know, uh, Alex's Jones and Jack's need to be a seller or a third of the as well to uh, community resources. Thank you very much. Okay. You brought a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, we are not having... You need to speak with the Well, I kind of have a general no, thing. No, not now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. He disappears um, before the end well, of the meeting. Well, if you meeting. want to go speak to him, you're welcome to go speak in the hall. Okay, we're going to address the <laughs> consent agenda um, items. We have one, two, three, five, five items on the consent agenda. Um, we were moved from the consent agenda, uh, approving the closed session after this meeting since uh, the matter is not ready for discussion by the Township Committee. Um, so if it does, first of all, does anyone from the Township Committee have any questions with respect to the items on the consent agenda? I have a comment. <coughs> I didn't remember yes, in my report. Rosenberg? Sorry, I didn't remember in my report to say that I went to the PTOC Safe Routes and School <coughs> meeting a week ago Monday, and at that meeting, we met somebody from Trans Options that talked about grants that are available that the municipality and the school board can get to improve the roof. And apparently, there's money on the table that we need to do. So in order to meet the deadline by January 31st of applying, one of the steps we have to do is have a resolution that says that we are committed to supporting the Safe Routes to School program. So that's why I have this resolution drafted for everybody. So this is something we need to do as the first step to try to get a grant. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yes, I'd like to ask, is there a specific area that we're looking to improve? Like, is there a specific area in town that we would like to address with the first grant if we're lucky enough to get it? <laughs> well, the school board would like the bridge, of course. Oh, the pink bridge? The, is well, it that color? School? <laughs> uh, you know. Middle school? Middle school bridge. Middle school bridge. I know they talked, Dr. Burton was there about Spring Street, some of the sidewalks there as well, mm -hmm. things like that could, could benefit from a grant. That would be awesome. We'll take what we can get. The first level is a bronze level, and but apparently Chatham was very successful last year in getting, so we were modeling on that. And Jesse came to the meeting, and he's involved in all over it. Great. What, what kind of funds are we talking about? The size of the grants? Mm -hmm. Thousands to tens of thousands, I think. Mm -hmm. But I'll take it. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, not enough for break. Any questions from the public on consent agenda items only? No? Nope. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the resolutions listed on the consent agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. I have a roll call vote, please. Ms. Levy? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Paul Eglin? Yes. Mayor Burstein? Yes. Okay, so 
We now come to discussing the name of the street behind um, yes, what is currently Canoebrook, behind the mall, behind the McCallie. Last year, um, there was a disconnect, to put it politely, <coughs> between what the Township Committee asked the, um, the school to do and what the school directed the children to do. Or the school children? The, uh, the students? The students. Um, and so I had a conversation, I was invited to the Boy Scouts after our meeting to discuss with them their disappointment with um, what had transpired and I suggested to them that as part of their continuing civic uh, lesson that they perhaps lobby some or all or as many of the township committee members as they wanted to, to again um, put forth the importance of their position as to how they want, uh, uh, to the street name. And so um, as we got towards the end of last year, it became um, too late in the year to be able to go through our process, which is A, to have a discussion, and then B, when that discussion comes to a conclusion, to then put a um, put an ordinance into effect, which is a first reading and then a second <coughs> reading. And so apparently there has been some success by our uh, students, and which is reflected here. So um, we have been asked to cons to reconsider the name on Canoeva. The and, and since we haven't taken any steps to finalize it, um, we are um, going to discuss amongst us <coughs> what we want to do come to a conclusion and open up to public discussion um, with respect to this issue only before we um, take a vote on where we're going to go with this. So, do any of my committee members want to make a comment? Or do we want to hear from the public first? I can make one comment. I believe this troop that Scoutmaster Finneran was from St. Rose, and I did speak with some of the Scoutmasters or people involved with um, Christchurch, the other troop. They've also um, said that Scoutmaster Finneran was this amazing person, and they felt very comfortable that this was a, a very good idea to honor his name. So it wasn't just coming from his specific troops, it was from all the troops in town. So that's why I was looking, you know, very happy to reconsider it. Anyone else have any comments before I open it to the public? My comment is that I'm glad you explained the disconnect because that sort of came down a little with a lot of confusion. And so I'm glad that that was explained. But it's also given, as much as it's frustrating that that had to happen, it's given them an added a lesson in how to really advocate and stick with something and persevere when you really want something and it's really exciting to see that. So we appreciate it. And with that being said, um, if anybody would like to make a comment about the potential change of the street name, um, the floor is open to you. Would you like to say something? <laughs> yes, uh, Jamie Scrooge, 77 Jefferson Avenue, um, Short Hills. And um, I'd like to clarify and I'd also like to, to make my suggestion. Um, from the recommendation of uh, Milburn's business administrator and with the um, proposal, um, the, uh, I guess you could call it a, um, a blueprint um, from the uh, from the sign company or whoever would be um, installing these signs, it would be in the best interest um, to go with Finneran Way um, because it would uh, best fit on these signs, both on um, 24 I-24 and then also Canoebrook, well, what is now Canoebrook Road, um, and uh, for an honorarium to be placed below um, the sign on, uh, which is uh, the two signs that are on Canoebrook Road. 
um, to say uh, Scoutmaster Finner and Way or whatever full name that includes Scoutmaster. Um, and that is my recommendation. Fitter and Way uh, with an honorarium below. And does your troop agree with you? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Abstain? <laughs> Uh, my name is Dan Cannon, 29 Bailey Road, Millburn. Current Scoutmaster took over from Ken Finneran uh, two and a half years ago. I didn't know Ken very long, and I can really uh, feel what a difficult job it was leading a bunch of boys like this for 36 years. You grow to love them, you grow to inspire them, you really get them you know, to, to follow your lead and teach them how to be great citizens. And it's been a lot of work. The last two and a half years raising kids, going to work, and doing this. I can't imagine doing it for 36 years in this community, having 90 Eagle Scouts. I can only wish I could fill his, his shoes, his memory, and I really hope that the Township Committee would recognize him today, and, and really the spirit of all Scouts that you know, served under him or were led by him over those years, as well as those that have aspired to Eagle and have gone to very successful careers. And we also have some adult leaders in this room also that can attest Ken, um, you know, was an aspiration to them because even the fact that they don't necessarily have uh, the children of their own or their children have come out of the troop, they still give back. And that, why do they give back? It was, it was because of him, uh, you know, and what kind of little example he was to the adult leaders. So I really am uh, asking from the bottom of my heart if the uh, Township Committee could recognize uh, the dinner and way uh, with an honorarium as Jamie suggested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do as well. So with that, um, is there any other comment from the Township Committee? I withdraw my horrible choice of Connor Sled. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, is there a motion to rename the street behind uh, the mall, um, what is currently that portion of Newark Road, to Finner and Way with the honorarium uh, Scoutmaster Finner and, Finner and Way? So moved. May I have a second? I second. May I have, we will call this, please. Mr. Levy? No. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. and members of the Milburn Township Committee. Uh, I'm Jamie's, Jamie's here at 77 Jefferson Avenue, Short Hill. As the current senior patrol leader of Troop 17, representing 36 years of current and past scouts, and also one of Mr. Finneran's 89 Eagle Scouts, I want to thank you all for this historic moment to dedicate a street to an influential member of our community and a strong community leader that, is, that, was, that had gone way too early in our hearts. Mr. Finneran devoted his life to teaching strong service and citizenship and positively changed our Milburn Short Hills community. By your vote tonight, his efforts and spirits will live on forever. Last May, you partnered with the school district to teach us, the students of Milburn, a civic lesson. The project had allowed us to mobilize, experience the democratic process firsthand. We campaigned, we addressed the public and township committee as I am right now, we united. 
Many of the students who were directly involved in this process, such as Ryan Cannon and Brian Caritti, who spoke in August, and also simply uh, those who observed, will take away an abundance of skills, experience, and clear comprehension that democracy isn't free. It comes with determination, sacrifice, and perseverance. We want to thank you all for achieving your civic lesson objective. And as a community of Milburn students who happen to be scouts, we are so pleased that Finner, the Finneran name will now be bestowed for all to see. The voice of the many have been heard, and we look forward to our continued cheerful service. We thank the righteousness of our great town leaders and look toward the passage, hopeful passage, and official street dedication. And scouts, if you would join a scout sign. And now, may the great scout master, keeper of all good scouts, be with us till we meet again. Thank you very much. Sections Traffic Ad Hoc Committee. It is the same, um, it's going to have the same people as last time. I thought we, we worked well together, and it's a, it should be a continuing committee. So that's, um, 
Any questions about that? Is there any need to have more people on the committee? No, I think it's a good work. It's a good number working. How I like you? your recommendations. It's what you brought up, so I think it must be a well run committee. Try my best. How, how often does the committee meet? The committee met about every three weeks. Um, we're supposed to meet once a month, mm -hmm. but it got started very late in the year last year, so we met about we met four times. So we'll meet approximately once a month. Um, we're going to put into effect what we the recommendations and then uh, move forward from there. And if there are no other questions, can I have a um, a motion to approve resolution 18041. So moved. Um, second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Levy? Yes. Mr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Ball Egwell? Yes. Mayor Burstein? Yes. Thank you. All business. Before we get to um, the discussion on complete screens. <laughs> I want to just announce that for the first meeting in February, I've asked, I'm, I'm trying to clean up some of the things we didn't do last year. Um, so one of the things that I've asked is that my chicken <laughs> subcommittee <laughs> provide us with their uh, recommendations of what the ordinance should look like. So that I anticipate seeing the first um, meeting in February, and I also anticipate a discussion as to where the um, where the committee uh, any recommendations by the committee on um, the Chatham Road Woodland um, Avenue Woodland Road Woodland Road. Thank you. I knew that wasn't right. The Woodland Road Road. We've been um, contacted by the developer to see where we're going with that and I haven't contacted him back yet, but I think that the committee needs to make some sort of a determination as to where, if anywhere it wants to go, it has some options. Now, the other thing that I wanted to raise is that um, as a result of the comments and questions raised at um, our last meeting, we went back and looked at a chronology of events and discussions between the township, uh, the township, members of the township committee, staff, consultants with representatives of the Silverman Group, um, who are the owners of the Woodland Chatham Road property. Um, the meetings that were held were for purposes of presentation of information by the Silverman Group. We've not made any commitments, and we did not have any negotiations. Changes that you've observed on the website depicting their concept plans have been generated by the Silverman Group and not by uh, not at the behest or by virtue of any agreement with the township. Um, so just to give a chronology, in the fall of 2016, I was I was I was contacted by a representative of the Silverman Group about the potential for developing the site. They acquired all, at that point, they had acquired all of the site except for the uh, one building, Dr. Hankinson's building. Alex and I met with them in order to find out what they had in mind. Thereafter, I um, told them that I wanted them to make a public presentation to show and describe their ideas. Um, and that presentation was done at the January 17th, 2017 meeting. I did this for a couple of reasons. One is I didn't want a su any suggestion that we were making some sort of an agreement behind closed doors. Following that presentation, the township planner, Paul Phillips, was contacted by a representative of the Silverman Group who was interested in how the presentation had been received. And on February 22nd, 2017, Alex McDonald, Paul Phillips, and I met with Richard Keller and Mr. Minow, um, who is their architect, um, and another um, representative of the Silverman Group for that purpose. At that time, I told them that I was really disappointed that what they showed us in January was not what they had showed us the prior fall. Um, there was 
was a further follow-up session on <coughs> April 7 with Paul Phillips and Alex McDonald, a representative of Silverman, where they came back with a smaller plan. Um, and thereafter, the, uh, Mr. Minow met with Paul Phillips and reduced, I guess, came back with another plan with a, a reduced number of units. And in all the gatherings after the January public meeting, the township's representatives have always remained noncommittal and met to receive information from Silverman's group. Um, nothing else happened until the late summer, early fall of 17, when the developer sought to reacquaint members of the township committee with the proposed project. The rep representatives of the Silverman group met at town hall with committeeman VB on August 14th, with committeewoman Eglow on August 23rd, and with Deputy Mayor Rosenberg, and committeeman Tillotson on September 12th. No negotiation of any type took place there, and no changes to the proposed plans to that date, um, since that date, as far as we know. From September till the present, Nothing's transpired other than two closed session meetings of the township committee with township attorneys and the recent exchange of letters between township attorney and Silverman's council where Mr. Inglesino, who is Silverman's council, complained of delay and foot driving, dragging on the part of the township. The township is currently considering its alternatives and there'll be no co public comment on the legal matters under consideration at this time. I do anticipate having a discussion before the public on February 6th. So I just wanted to lay that out there so you know where we have been and where we are going. Can we put that on the website? Sure. Well, I can, but someone else can. <laughs> okay. Um, and now to Complete Streets. And what I wanted to discuss about Complete Streets right now are, are a couple of things. One is, um, Flexible parking. I think that at, as at last, towards the end of last year, there was a, a discussion that came out of the ad hoc that the, um, if we decide, if the township committee decides to remove flexible parking, that the um, merchants didn't <coughs> want that to happen until August so that it doesn't impact them. If that's the case, then my what I'm going to suggest is that we make a decision in or around the end of April, first meeting of May, as to whether or not we're going to remove the flexible parking. Um, and, or at least go out for quotes to remove it, if we decide that that's what we want to do. And the reason is, I believe that at this point we have removed every dollar to see whether that makes parking easier <coughs> and another suggestion has been to move the bollards back about a foot to give some <coughs> greater width and breadth so that people may be more comfortable parking there as well and see how that goes if that's a viable alternative as well um, and then if we have a, a tremendous call for the <coughs> removal yet again or continued um, call for that, then we can decide that um, no later than the first meeting in May. <coughs> so that is my suggestion with respect to flexible parking. Did we have some sort of estimate though, even a verbal already? Yes. Can you show that? Yeah, the, uh, the verbal estimate was uh, between four hundred and four hundred and fifty thousand uh, to remove the flexible parking. And to convert it into curbing. Correct. With asphalt. Correct. With that it was about a two-week process. A two-week estimate. Would that also be giving a foot more to parking? So with the idea of moving the bollards back a foot, you're taking a foot away from the sidewalk. So you would still have the same. So would that width of parking be the width that is now in other parts of Melbourne? Uh, there were there were no uh, real specifics. It wasn't a uh, bid specification or anything like that. It was sort of a roundabout number as to you know getting a sense of what that might be. I, I would just suggest that um, with the uh, price quote to remove the flexible parking, we also look to return the other lane to Melbourne Avenue and move that 
crosswalking in front of Dunkin' Donuts is one comprehensive quote. If we're going to go through the pain of, of disrupting merchants, residents, visitors, let's try to see if we can do as much as possible under one umbrella. That would be my suggestion and recommendation. And my, uh, the other thing that I'd like to add is to see if, in fact, we can get construction to happen perhaps maybe 4 a.m. to 12 noon to see what that, what that cost would look like. It would be less disruptive for businesses as well to see if we can maybe change the construction time frame uh, earlier in the morning to accommodate their, uh, their merchants as well. Well, I think each of those suggestions can be come up. Well, <coughs> one of the things I was going to suggest as well is to have, at our last meeting, we hired a traffic consultant. And my suggestion would be for him to look at the crosswalk at Dunkin' Donuts and tell us where we should be putting it. Um, because I agree with you that it's not the place where it is now. Um, so that is a suggestion that I think we should have a consultant look at that. And someone has suggested to me as well that have them look also at the um, egress and ingress to parking lot five simultaneously. So all that, since we're giving ourselves a couple of months before we're gonna make any decisions, and, and the decision and the, and the issues that you raised, I think are all individual questions that we'll have to address and decide whether we're going to do any one or all of them. Um, and I think that that's a decision to come up. All of those decisions have to be made no later than the first meeting in that. I'd like to agree with what committee. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Mr. Levy. Oh, you can go for it. I just said um, I would like to agree with committee when we regard that people are, I believe, equally frustrated with the one lane as they are with the flexible parking. And if we're going to start disruption and reconstructing, deconstructing, Make it a comprehensive plan. I think that is a very smart idea. I think that it requires, in my view, a bifurcated approach. The flexible parking, in my view, does not require an expert analysis or an engineering analysis to discern the extent to which it has been received with acceptance of by most people who commute into our town. I don't think that we need an expert on the flexible parking to render that decision. Nor do I think that it requires an expert analysis in order to discern whether it serves the purpose of causing traffic calming, which is one of the bases of the Complete Streets program. So in my view, I would support uh, eliminating flexible parking, returning it to uh, curb parking, although I've seen thought about that as well too. But not packaging that yet, if at all, with any changes to two lanes to one lane or where a curve should be or bump outs or all that. Because that, as I understand it from the arterial presentations, at least to me to me, serves the purpose, among other things, of traffic calming. And if we package those things together, then we are defeating the entire purpose complete streets. Now that may be something that the Township Committee decides to do. The Township Committee may say, given a public complaint and other factors, that complete streets has not been a success, at least on phase one, and we want to visit all of it. But that has not been the resolution or determination of the, of the Township Committee. So I personally would support eliminating flex parking and returning it to normal curb parking, at least visiting whether curb parking is the preferred alternative, which I gather that it would be. Then my understanding of what Ms. Lieberberg was saying, and I happen to agree with you, I think that the traffic calming aspects don't necessarily get decided together, but I think her point was that if we are going to do it, I mean, it's something that she wants to raise to be discussed. Whether we agree to do it or not agree to do it is another matter, but if we are going to do it, then we do everything together to be uh, done at the same time, so that if there's going to be construction done at the same time, it's all done at the same time. Yes. I think that was the point. And I, and I understood that to be the point. Okay. And, and my point was is that the uh, expert that we've retained, the house consultant we've retained, should be charged with 
reviewing whether the crosswalk should be there or not be there. Um, I personally am not competent to discern where a crosswalk should be okay. given traffic calming issues. I can understand if an expert presents it to us as to why a crosswalk should be there or the ingress or egress or, or, or different topography changes like that. I can understand it, hopefully, if, if it is presented to us, but we shouldn't as a committee or would I suggest that we as committee persons individually discern whether traffic calming is served by moving crosswalks or traffic calming is served by moving two lanes to one or, or other changes like that too. That's if we stay with traffic calming as being one of the bases for complete streets, but it may be the determination of this, of this group that uh, the bases for complete streets needs to change. And traffic calming has not served the interests of the town, and if that's the case, then I will wait for that kind of democratic decision as well. Okay. Well, I for one am a strong proponent of traffic calming. There was a terrible accident in Wyoming recently when you're going to get hit by a car going 25. I'd rather get hit by a car going 25 than going 40. Um, okay. Um, any other comments with respect? So, so here's so flexible. We're going to deal with you know, later than March, uh, May 1st. Um, do you agree that we should have our expert? Um, look at the um, the crosswalk and at Dunkin' Donuts. Is that something we agree that he should be looking at? We have well, him on retainer now, correct? Correct. Well, he's right. We we have contract with him. the the crosswalk at Dunkin' Donuts is not a complete streets related issue. It's the fact that they moved the entrance and exit into the parking lot so that you are exiting the parking lot into the crosswalk. Right. Mm -hmm. so Understood. Understood. That's not we a complete street. That, that, that's but just a safety not, issue, not a complete street. Understood. But but here's the, the, the point is that we need to have somebody who can say to us, this is what you should be doing. Agreed. Okay, that's, so that the point is we'd like to direct them to do that. Agreed. And Agreed. Also, look at, uh, also look at the uh, narrowing on Northern Avenue, that one lane night. I think that has to be looked at as well. Well, for what, though? Right. What, what's the charge to the engineer? To look at it for what? The traffic congestion. The congestion, not common. Okay, but if you asked the traffic engineer and said, well, does narrowing two to one create more congestion? I think the answer may be yes. It's two. It but two, that doesn't one, mean two. that it doesn't serve a greater purpose. So uh, I think. Before we charge the engineer with undertaking a task, we have to understand what the purpose of it is. Yes? So here we are up here, charged to make policy. Our policy was complete streets as a concept. In practice, for example, our planner, the, the designer would say that having only one egress from the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot is better for uh, best practices for complete streets. So we went with it. But we're seeing now from enough complaints and enough near misses that best practices or not, it's not working. So if we're here to make policy, we don't necessarily need another expert to say, well, it's okay. We know, we know enough people have told us. So if that's something we want to bid on, we could do. In fact, but I would actually suggest that we consider, and I know Committee and Eglo has said this as well, entering at the same point from the Essex Street, enter only if we're going to reconfigure the, the in egress and ingress of that parking lot. So not, not being able to leave from uh, Starbucks and go out that way, go out Essex, but only be able to leave with the two openings by, by Dunkin' Donuts. I think we, we should be considering all of that at once. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's why I suggested having a, I mean, I don't think any one of us, we're going to sit up here and say, I disagree with you about this, and I disagree with you about it, and I agree with you about this. So rather than that, I think it would behoove us, we have somebody who can help us through this process to ask him to look at that whole area and, and give us his comments after hearing what the issues are. And that's Mazer. That's amazing. So there's no reason that shouldn't that, that happen now. But as far as the flexible parking, what I'm hearing up here, is 
we have enough people that are interested in digging this up that if we went back to the merchants and asked if it's two weeks, why wait? Well, because they don't want it to do it until August anyway. Why? Because of, because of that's disruption for business. Right, disruption for business. That's when they're going to be disclosed. That's when some of them will probably take their vacations. We'll make sure that they'll close down for those couple of weeks of, of the construction. And I'd, I'd also just suggest, and I learned that from Gennaro out there, that if we're going to think about moving something, that maybe we tape it up first before we actually move it. So if we were doing, for example, the crosswalk, if we were to think about moving it, whether we would temporarily move it on a trial basis with permission from the county, and see how that, you know, is that something we could do? So before we start digging and taping, let's do a little taping. When you say that the merchants prefer August, has the DMDA opined that that's what it prefers, or has a few merchants comment on that? So it's dangerous to say merchants, I'll, I'll plural, because I don't know how many that is. Well, means. I'll tell you that that came out of the ad hoc, out of the complete streets ad hoc. That was one of the issues. That was one of the, uh, and I, I believe that um, one of the members of the ad hoc actually did some sort of a, Thank you. That one of the one of the members of the ad hoc um, actually did a survey of merchants to to come to that um, conclusion. Right. My only my suggestion would be that to the extent that this happens, and to the extent it's decided to do it in August, that we have a fair representation of merchants merchants who do believe that it should be in August. Because I wouldn't want to. That's fair. Have someone come up and say, "Well, I wasn't doing this all That's fair. So, uh, DMDA is uh, can communicate with the merchants by way of survey if we test them to do that. And they should then report back to us what their preferences are, assuming that this is being uh, done. I also, have, I just have a question. Also, if we agree to do this um, as a committee by April, does that give us enough time? To put it out to bid and the process and, and to make it and, and to secure a construction company that will we'll be able to do it in August and not delay it. To that's September. why that's why we're choosing to do it then. We did the, we figured out where we'd have to when we'd have to do it by in order to get that done. Seems pretty tight. Yeah. The, the way for me, I mean, that it seems like it's a very <laughs> ambitious, <laughs> ambitious based upon previous construction projects. I'm just thinking maybe we up it to April. Or something. Maybe we will. Um, when they were doing the corner, the common lot and the clock tower, and I begged to wait to August, and I believe it was the paper mill representative at the time who said. No, do it over spring break because the town is empty. Do that corner. And I said, don't, please don't do the corner. So now, why is the spring break that one week of April, if they could do one side, if we all agree to remove flex parking, the left side seems to be the more problematic parking side. Why are we going to. Which is left? Is that the, the side on the, on the Across north the movie side? theater. Strata side. Let's try It's like, why can't we break this into maybe piecemeal mm -hmm. and get that one side done? If we're not going to be talking about the entire part from Clemenza's, they were willing to do the clock tower and the common lot quarter, which I thought was very disruptive over spring break. So I don't know what the panacea of waiting until August is. Well, as, as Mr. Lee said, let's hear from the merchants then if, they, if, if they're okay with it, because we're doing it for them. Yeah. Just, I just also speak, you need to be, be careful too. That, you know, obviously the 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 projection of a of a quote, you know, a little a little over six months ago, was that it would take two weeks. Uh, you just, I mean, obviously construction is construction, so um, you know, I just want you to be aware of that, as well as the four fifty. We don't know about that prior either. Yeah. And have you yet seen a construction contract finished on time? Yes. Oh. I was asking Diane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the estimate was on no for no. Is a motion necessary to proceed with this process? No. We're just discussing it now so we can decide, you know, we're not we're not gonna make a decision today about it. 
and Mr. Luby's asked to hear from the merchants. So will you be the liaison? We'll go back to the BNDA and ask them to do a survey. And <coughs> survey them. When, you know, if we're going to do it, what what, okay. what works for them? We'll do. Okay. Yeah. Is this a uh, complete streets whole business discussion limited to uh, what has been deemed phase one? No, that's the second half. Is then, how we want to go forward. Then you should introduce the second half. But wait, I, I think Mr. Falcon wanted to say something. <clears throat> I just wanted to caution that as far as the phase one is concerned, if this begins to look like it's a real possibility, Essex County has issued a permit for the construction within its right of way of what we see out there. In order for that to be changed, I think you're going to want to have the administrator make contact early on with the county engineer's department mm -hmm. to start the ball rolling because this is going to be a change from what has been already authorized. Okay, the second part of this is that going forward. Do we want to go forward with a something? Do we want to go forward with finishing up the downtown and uh, the train station or do we want to go further east that was talked about with, I don't know, is that phase 2A? <coughs> with phase 2A or do we want to go back to finishing up downtown? So that, and that's presuming people want to finish it. Um, I'm a proponent of finishing it. I don't think the town should be left half done. Mr. Leader. Yeah, I support that view. I don't, I don't think it, the township can be left half done, particularly if we make certain changes uh, now. And I'm open to revisiting the extent to which uh, we would use arterial, uh, however, because it's mis evidently miscalculated with regard to flex parking here now. One error in design does not beget another error in design necessarily, and I understand that the prior township committee approved that, and it was presented to the public, and evidently nobody objected, or no one said they understood it, or whatever. It was presented. Uh, but I would be open to visiting completion of what has been deemed to be complete streets, visiting the extent to which we continue with arterial, or ask for some concessions from arterial, given that it's going to cost us in the neighborhood $500,000 to correct this error. Or to correct this error in, in, in their judgment. Actually, that's not fair. To correct a design that has not been accepted. I don't want to call it an error. It's not an error. It was a design that has not been uh, widely accepted by the community. That's a fair way to say it. So I would be a proponent of taking that approach. May I ask the clarification? You would be a proponent of continuing with arterial? No. Oh. I'd be a, I'd be a proponent of. Um, I, I wouldn't reject arterial going forward, and I, 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 we present the design uh, that it has that's consistent with the current design and look at parking. And keep in mind that if we continue with, I continue to call it complete streets for ease of reference, but if we continue with complete streets, if we brought in another designer that delays things perhaps another year, I don't know what the increased costs are going to be. We're already looking at in the neighborhood of $500,000 increased costs now. I don't know what the increased costs of lining up the new designer would be and then presenting to the public, et cetera, and all those kind of things. Coupled with the fact by the time this gets around to being done, it may be another year and a half from now, construction costs increase. A lot of factors come into play that increase the cost to everyone. And so I'd be open to hearing from Arterial uh, what it's thoughts were, given the experience it faced on phase one, and said, well, listen, we understood that uh, this design wasn't well received for phase one. Here's our per here is our proposed change, if any, for what we've done on phase two, or what we intend to do on phase two. So I would, I would not just exclude arterial, but I'd be open to hearing from them or perhaps hearing from somebody else. May I speak? In one second, I okay, just think that sure. we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. I don't think we're ready to even discuss a design firm until um, we sort of have a discussion as to what we want to do. And I also would like to do it in a manner differently than it was done. When we went to the program, they talk about doing it from the ground up as opposed to top down. And it's something I, I've been thinking about a lot, doing it from the ground up, having meetings, um, really focus groups as to what, what we want what the town wants, what will work for the town, and then going from there. 
I would just have to counter what Mr. Levy said. I believe from my heart that Arterial had no idea how Milburn functions. Milburn is an unusual town, all one-way streets. I believe Arterial's design was so counter to what Milburn needs as far as getting rid of the right-hand lane in front of the lighting store that our emergency trucks have trouble getting through as far as no left turn at Charlie Browns to get back around town. Arterial has used up their contract, I believe. I believe to even consider giving Arterial a hint of Milburn accepting anything they have to design moving forward would just be the biggest mistake. I want to be heard. This is a year when people are asked to sharpen their pencils because of the tax laws and we don't know what's up ahead. We're also this year tasked with fixing our master plan. Should we have a better idea of where we're going before we decide major changes? I understand by the train station there's some safety issues and those we can tackle now. But I'd like to see a little bit more of what the plan, what the plan is in terms of for any development just so we have a better idea while we're doing this. I, I agree that before any money is spent on continuing complete streets project, we've got to fix what we have done with the mess that we have and before any, any hint of going forward with phase two. <coughs> so am I hearing then that you're not, you do not support moving forward, is that, that's correct? Not at this time. I support fixing what we what needs to be fixed first and looking at it at potentially some later date, but not moving forward with any 2A until we fix the problems with one. And I agree with Jody that we need to look at perhaps the other areas that really mandate our, our attention from a safety perspective. The train station, for one, those crosswalks in, at the Melbourne train station seem to be um, very perilous at very early hours in the morning. I think those um, that kind of drop off safety merits our attention before uh, 2A as it was present, uh, initially presented, the area from the other side of Milburn Avenue, uh, from where it ends, where Blue Mercury is, and, and further north. I think we have to wait until we, we look at what we've done and fix that first. Mm -hmm. well, okay. um, I don't know that they're mutually exclusive. I mean, to the extent Repairs need to be done to phase one. Uh, they can be done at the same time that we are considering and or moving forward with plans to design 2A. I mean, they, they can be done even with separate designers. This township committee is confident enough to meet both of them at the same time. So I wouldn't uh, separate the two and just say, well, we have to fix one before we can move to two. They can be done at the same time. I agree with um, Committee Woman Lieberman and Jody Rosenberg that we need to look at the overall plan this time and not um, move forward until we look backwards a little bit and fix what we did. So you're telling me that you don't think we should go forward with focus groups? Is that, I just want to make sure with I understand focus? what everybody's, would, yes, because that would be the next stage if we're going to do something. Um, but without any commitment to hire any planners. Right, we're not at that stage. Oh, after that would be fine. That would be okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, focus groups that uh, mm -hmm. embrace community participation I think are a good idea, but I, I don't think we should be spending any more uh, taxpayer money on looking at, at expensive plans until we remedy the problems that we have and have paid for that and then look ahead. But I, I think a focus group is a great idea. Okay. It's free. It's free. Well, not necessarily. Not if you get somebody to facilitate. Right? Okay. So, how about that, Mr. Toast? The, the man who was here yeah. for the public, what was it called? The something for public space? The Center for Public Project Space? For public oh, project for Public Space. It was free. Well, he was free because no. he came to speak with us, but I don't know that he free if we wanted to ask him to help us facilitate the project. So, you need a professional focus group model, which I can hook you up with.
So I, I but I do think that that should be the very first thing we do before we go to the next stage. So if we are agreed that that is something we should be moving forward with, I move on with the focus group. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is there any kind of survey monkey that we would do just in terms of our town for now as well? We'll, we'll figure that out. That's the next step. All right. I just want to raise a question that, uh, that was brought to me by one of the residents on Godwell Terrace. You know, this is, this is still part of Melbourne Avenue. They can't seem to get out of their street during uh, school opening in the morning. They cannot make a left turn. Uh, they can't park on their street because it's filled with student vehicles. And I know Taylor, Re Taylor, Ro uh, Taylor Street residents are experiencing the same difficulties. Um, can we work? Uh, with either our law enforcement to, to look at these issues, or I think they're still, you know, their they're traffic, traffic safety, uh, township issues that I'm not sure what jurisdiction they fall under, but we're talking about <laughs> Milburn Avenue, um, that the kids seem to plot, you know, I know there's the crosswalk by Wells Fargo and there's the crosswalk by St. Rose, but there's a, a big middle in between, and, and cars don't stop. And you mentioned this accident that was on Wyoming <coughs> Avenue. I fear that we're setting ourselves up for another potential accident right in front of the high school uh, at, 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 uh, at dismissal and at uh, opening bell. So it's just something I think we should look at as a committee to address that from a safety issue. Well, I think um, Alex will talk to the police about that and we'll talk more. Thank you. All right. Um, are there any other, do any committee members have any other items of um, hold business? No? Does anybody have any items of new business to address? Okay. I actually, I was um, I received in the mail. Oh, um, there is a future municipal leader scholarship comp competition. I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> I have you in mind. Um, I will be sending out something uh, to the schools, to the PPO, whatever, but it is a scholarship um, among four high schools through, and let's see, I'm trying to figure out what, how much. <laughs> Whatever it is, as you said, you'll take it, right? It's um, called the Lewis Bay Second Future Municipal Leaders Scholarship. And I will make sure that, uh, let's see. Uh, it's a th the three $1,000 scholarships. It's a statewide scholarship comp competition centering on the theme, What My Municipal Government Does Best. I want to see a copy. <laughs> and seeks to advance the virtues of elected and volunteer members of the municipal government. So I will get that information out to the schools. When the um, when hopefully we'll, be we'll, well, actually, we're supposed to announce this at the beginning of February. So okay, great. So we have time. So we have time. Can we nominate? No. They apply. They apply. Uh -huh. <laughs> they have to write essays. I already shot a video with one of the candidates. Um, but the applicant, the, the, um, Deadline for submission of entries to the hometown mayor is going to be March 9th. So, and then we submit to the league by April 2nd. So, I will get this out to people of interest, and but I just wanted to mention it. I should have done it when all this. I should have let the scouts leave, right? They should have all been doing this. You can okay. share with the scouts. Okay. And so it's only it's only for high school. High school. High school. Does it stipulate the grade? Oh, high school juniors and seniors. Juniors and seniors. Uh, Aren't you a junior? No, he's a sophomore. Oh, I thought you were a sophomore last year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was. <laughs> school year versus uh, calendar. Okay. All right. Um, any any other new business? No. Okay. All right. So public discussion. Here's the club. First of all, we have a new member. 
clock. Yes. <laughs> see it. Yeah. See it. Yeah. Yeah. This way, nobody has to keep time themselves. When invited to speak, come to the lectern, state your name clearly, your address, speak into the podium microphone so your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. Whenever you read from a prepared statement, please give a copy to Christine Gotti or email it to her at cgotti at milburntwp.org. Um, all speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. And please don't repeat um, what you've said at prior meetings if you can avoid it. And try not to repeat what others have said as well. So with that, come on up. You can line up behind her if you want. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Sherman, South Mountain Civic Association. I have a prepared statement. I will give a copy to Ms. Gaddy. Uh, this week we had hoped to receive good news that Alternative 4A, the Regional Flood Mitigation Project, would be approved by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. However, I've been informed by Dan Aschenbach of the Broadway River Mayor's Council that the U.S. Army Corps wants an additional geotechnical study completed to examine the effects before and after the proposed project. Uh, Senator Menendez is supposed to meet with the Lieutenant General of the Army Corps this week to discuss the future of Alternative 4A. After years of analysis, Alternative 4A was deemed the most cost-effective method of protecting this town and others along the Rahway River from a 50-year flood. We need this project to move forward. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection supports this plan. Our senators and Congressman Lance support it as well. Uh, South Mountain Civic Association has been working for a federally funded flood mitigation project for years following Hurricane Irene. This is not a neighborhood problem, it's not a township problem, it's a regional problem. Once the hurricane season is over, it is very easy to forget what devastation this town suffered during two major hurricanes. There are new residents who have little to no knowledge of past weather events and business owners who were not here during either hurricane. There is new construction on sites that suffered substantial water damage to basement and ground level property. My organization is asking once again for the support of the Township Committee to advance alternative 4A. Mayor Burstein has written to the Army Corps and many residents have signed petitions, called and written our representatives in addition to Lieutenant General Semonite. We need to move forward on this project, which was slated to begin construction in the spring of 2018. I urge the mayor and members of the Township Committee to reach out again to the U.S. Army Corps to encourage them to begin work on Alternative 4A as it was scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Katie Rosenthal, 12 Marion Avenue, Short Hills. I'd like to start off by asking the committee to expect to extend an invitation to Mr. DiVincenzo to come to Milburn so that the um, taxpayers and voters of Milburn can ask him questions regarding his uh, expenditures in the South Mountain Reservation. Um, as a citizen, I believe that let me just preface this by saying approximately 25% of our tax bill goes to the county. And DiVincenzo is spending money like water in that reservation. I think his expenditures are environmentally irresponsible and financially irresponsible. He is turning that beautiful piece of property into a theme park at our expense. And he's got to be stopped. And I would like for you to invite him here so that we as a municipality and as probably one of the largest contributors to the Essex County tax coffers to put an end to this. That's number one. Number two, as I've just communicated with the chair of the Environmental Commission, I like, I am very much in favor of the proposed impervious lot and building height verification policy, but I have a concern. Although I'm no fan of development in this community, uh, by once a developer digs a foundation and puts their footings in, it's a little late to tell him that his ratio of impervious to pervious uh, surfaces are off. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to have to redo a, a foundation. 
So my, my, my suggestion is that the review period happen maybe before the footings are poured. Um, as far as the Woodland Road development, which is the, my, my third issue, has an environmental impact study been submitted? Does anyone know? No. Okay. I'm, I'm just asking. Okay. I'm not sure exactly where all this is in the, in the mix. Um, and uh, that's basically it. Thank you all for your time and attention. <coughs> Good evening, Richard Wasserman, 24 Inverness Court. Um, I want to applaud the uh, committee for their uh, their moves on flex parking. I think it's been a, uh, a terrible trouble to the town, to its residents, to the merchants, and I'm um, very happy that um, that the council is going to take action on this. As part of uh, as part of that, I also want to caution that when you go forward, I think there's a lot of detail that you should consider. Um, for instance, um, maybe this time we can try to work with the utility or see if the utility would be open to, you know, getting rid of the, you know, getting rid of the poles that are currently in the middle of the sidewalks. You know, there's a lot of detail that goes into this. And I'm, even though I am so against flex parking and want it out of here, um, as you all know, uh, I think that we should really pay attention to detail, and I'm a little concerned, uh, Mayor, I, I know that you're considering at one point appointing a working committee, a subcommittee, because there is a lot of de detail that goes into this, and as we found that when we put up the flex parking with the bowlers and the, and the width of, um, of the flex parking, um, I think that we may have the reverse situation, that we want to make sure that we get the width of the uh, parking spots correct. We want to work with the utility to see if we can get rid of those poles now. I mean, I don't know if it would delay it. Maybe, maybe by some miracle, they'd be open to, you know, burying them. Um, and I think that would be really a big help to the appearance of the sidewalks. Um, you know, as well as, uh, as well as other issues in terms of uh, the merchants. Um, I think it'd be great if we could do the work you know, in the evenings or, you know, or get the merchants, uh, you know, feedback. Um, the other thing, you know, that kind of goes into this discussion is, um, is talk of uh, the DMBA, and I think that they should coordinate with the town, you know, so that the merchants aren't left, you know, holding the bag. I think that um, I was actually very disappointed that the DMBA, what they were going to make a presentation tonight, and I think a lot of people wanted to come and to question what their, what their thinking was going forward in terms of the strategy. And I really think that before you, know, you just jump into you know, ripping this down, that we can support the merchants and the town with finally you know, a little marketing or, or some uh, good publicity for the town you know, before they go through this whole thing again. You know, so, so I'm disappointed that the DMD was not here to, to listen to some input from um, the greater town because I had some input for them also. But you have I, the president of the DMDA standing here, so he'll listen. Well, that's that's a longer discussion. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Dave Cosgrove, 99 OQ. Mayor, I want, to, I want to thank you for finally telling us something about this project. I've been trying for six months to get this board or any member of this board to tell us anything about this project. I'm willing to have it. Um, and I had some very tough questions for you tonight, Mayor, um, on why you haven't told me things when I've asked you things. But I'm glad. I hope this is turning over a new leaf. Um, so, and I hope you keep this up. Um, I think you all have an obligation to tell us what's going on. I'm kind of stunned that all this went on. Um, when I'm told there's nothing going on except at public meetings. Um, so, so I do have a couple questions on, on what you, you know, kind of <coughs> surprised us with tonight. And the, and the one is, what's the latest offer that this uh, developer has made to you, the latest proposition? There's been no proposition. Do you want me to answer Yeah. There's been no proposition. So let me just back up a little bit. I think it was at the last meeting in response, perhaps to a question from Mrs. Cosgrove, or maybe it was, uh, it was Mrs. Levinson. I, I made the point that other than the letters that transpired between 
the counsel to the developer and me that there had been nothing otherwise that had gone on as far as meeting with the developer. And about the next day, I had the good fortune to talk to the administrator, and I said, you know, I want to make sure what I said there was right. I took a look at the film of the last meeting the video to make sure what I had been asked. And so, as a result of that, <clears throat> I took a look at the notes that we have and any records whatsoever. I was not part of those meetings, but I got to the bottom of when they occurred and what the nature of them was, so that I was able to provide the mayor with the timeline that she discussed tonight. And she agreed, we really need to straighten things out, because I think it's the attitude that I'm picking up from the people, you and your neighbors, is, you know, there's something in the oven here, and the door is going to be open, and something's popping out, and <clears throat> people have bad recollection of uh, what went on with Matt Callie all of a sudden. I, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with this scenario, but holy mackerel, before we knew it, there was an ordinance, and it was the planning board, and so forth. So I thought, uh, and the, the mayor encouraged me in this, that we ought to really kind of come back tonight and say, well, gee whiz, it turned out that there were informational sessions which the developer had with individual members of the committee mm -hmm. <coughs> and with the mayor and Alex from time to time. But there are no proposals, there are no negotiations, there are no commitments that were asked, there were no commitments that were given. We are essentially, as you can tell from me, Mr. Inglesino's letter to me, which was expressed great disappointment that the township has done nothing, uh, that uh, he's, uh, he's actually got it right. There, there's nothing of the kind of thing that I think you're thinking about by way of a proposal or a negotiation or anything. The information sessions, they put the, the various iterations of their their own concept plans on the table, but nothing has been done. What was your last concept? I'm, I'm presuming it's whatever's on your website. There's nothing on the website now. Oh, what what was the last proposition made to the board? Smaller, the, the, the smaller <laughs> version, the, the, le the lesser amount of the How many units? The, le the one that was on their website. I believe 62. The letter back from Mr. Inglesano suggests uh, that you guys have been negotiating a solution to this. No. So he's, he's lying when he writes that. I'm not going to say he's lying. Okay. He's certainly not right. There have been no negotiations. I have not had any negotiations with him whatsoever. Then there's a um, an indication from Mr. Iguosano too that they expect to hear from you in January. What is it they're going to hear from you in January? What is it he thinks he's going to hear from you in January? Yes, we don't know what's going to happen next, but I, I presume he's going to hear from us that we're going to discuss it at the meeting in February. Hear what? What do you mean hear what? Well, he's, he's saying in his letter that there's been negotiations going on, and he's accusing you folks of not continuing in good faith to negotiate this project. And he says, I'm expecting to hear counsel from, from you from you probably on, uh, in, in January about the project. There's not, it, we're here in January. There's not another meeting, is there? Well, they're disappointed once yeah. again because we haven't responded in January and nothing's going to happen in January because I just heard tonight that the township committee is going to take this up on February 6th. And the... Um, that, that's all I have. Um, you know, were there were there documents that were exchanged along with the developer at any of these meetings with the board members? No. Okay. Was there more than one board? Out. Any kind of plans that were given? No, they just emails? had their pictures, the ones that they showed yeah, they in their. Were, was there one, more than one board member at any one of these meetings? <laughs> two. Because there were two. they weren't allowed to be three for sunshine law, so they asked for just two of us just to say, "Do you have any questions on our pamphlet?" And who were the two that were at the meeting? I went with Mr. Uh, Tillotson. I went alone. Okay. And I also was solo. And it was the same presentation that was... January. That was provided here. <coughs> okay. And we were given the opportunity to ask the same questions, which I actually did. And that was it. There were no requests, no negotiations, no... Okay. So it was done one at a time or two at a time, so we don't have to have a public meeting about it? Correct. That's yes. it. Ed Mazur, Greenwood Drive in Milburn. Uh, I'd like to amplify on uh, uh, some of the things that the committee woman uh, Eglo mentioned uh, earlier as far as the difficulties of uh, emergency vehicles go, 
getting through town and the fact that we do have uh, prevalence of one-way streets in the downtown. Uh, this makes it very difficult for emergency vehicles uh, to go through because basically you stop until the uh, traffic light turns from uh, red to green because otherwise you, you just don't have the ability to get around the vehicles. Uh, 35 years ago in Milburn, we had a system of, uh, where the fire department could override the traffic signals on Milburn Avenue. At that time, we had much less traffic, and we had three full lanes uh, going through. Uh, that system went into disrepair. Uh, there are delays now in getting emergency vehicles to fire department uh, through town when they're heading east or north up uh, Old Short Hills Road. Uh, I've uh, pulled some data from the uh, uh, Mountain Valley uh, Emergency Services, and uh, this does indicate uh, that uh, there is an increase in response times uh, from uh, when we, uh, be before we did complete streets to uh, after we did complete streets, and particularly when there is heavy traffic. Uh, that's an example, July 11th, uh, they responded to 364 Wyoming Avenue on an alarm. At midnight, they did it in six minutes. They were called again at 1236. It took nine minutes. Uh, I think the time is significant. Uh, we also have the situation, which I can't get a handle on, with the first aid squad uh, heading west on Essex Street. You've got the traffic light in the middle of the block. You've got the traffic light at the end of the block. What I would ask is now that we've engaged a traffic consultant, that we ask the traffic consultant to look into the situations, uh, to price out the system. This would be completely independent of uh, what you decide to do with complete streets. Similar systems are routinely used by uh, uh, New York City to get buses back, back on schedule. And it seems a shame that, that we've got our emergency vehicles uh, backed up to red lights when uh, uh, that should not be necessary. I have some uh, comparative data which I'll give to Ms. Guy, and uh, you can decide if you want to circulate this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rupa. I live at Santa Cruz Old Short Hills Road, and um, I was uh, listening to the conversation uh, today and wanted to make a few points. Okay. Um, I heard about the traffic expert just saying that it, these um, designs last time is going to be called back, and I I was wondering uh, if somebody has, in my opinion at least, has made a mistake and has not considered how this town works and done a design, and why would we bring back the same person instead of a new person with, that will come with no baggage and actually look at this with a clean slate and try to resolve it versus somebody that will probably feel um, a little more defensive about mm -hmm. what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that is a very good option. I, if, if there is any possibility, I would like the committee to consider getting a different expert so we have better ideas and that uh, the focus group is a great idea. So all of us that are actually living in town and living through this traffic situation every day give our opinions and uh, our input as well. Um, also, um, there was a mention of taking a parallel path between phase one and phase two of the um, downtown um, beautification, or uh, whatever you want to call that. But um, I disagree with that, and I wanted the committee to know that. When, when we haven't learned from what we have done wrong in phase one, why do we want to go ahead with phase two? Because um, I, I think it's smart to learn from our mistakes. And to do it in parallel, we are actually not learning from that and trying to spend money on phase two. Um, also, I would um, like to bring up another um, agenda uh, for the focus groups. I don't, uh, I haven't seen or um, heard um, of any discussion around how we are preparing for the additional traffic that's going to be in town when we finish McCallie and when we finish uh, the Silverman group. 
I, I live on Old Short Hill, and it takes me five minutes to get out of my driveway. So I can very well understand the gentleman that was talking before me, that uh, vehicles, the <coughs> emergency vehicles take longer. So I can't get out of my driveway, and we're going to add 600 vehicles once these two projects are complete. How are we as a community preparing for that? I would like to hear more of that coming from the committee, or maybe have focus groups around that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, David Shear, 101 Oakley Terrace. Um, I, I want to tell the committee what one thing that we're worried about popping out of the oven in terms of the um, uh, Woodland Road uh, project. And that's the fact that the um, minutes from, I believe it was the last planning board meeting, I December, December, 20th. December 20th. December 20th planning board meeting, specify that the mayor is planning to ask that the, at least the gas station area of the Woodland Road site be designated a redevelopment area. I will tell, uh, this is news that wasn't on your list of things that happened. Um, in, in addition to, the, to that list, obviously, there's been a lot of discussion with the developer about this development. Um, uh, we were concerned that there was going to be, it was, we know that the developer doesn't want to have to get any variances. And um, we were concerned that there was going to be what's called an overlay that was going to pop out of the oven. Now we find it looks as though it's going to be this redevelopment designation that's going to provide the, me, the way that the township committee can hand this project to the developer. Could, uh, I, I have one other thing to say, but I would like your comments on that. What's going on? I will. I, I misspoke. I should have said, the reason I even brought it up was just to give the planning board an idea that in addition to the work of the master plan, it is, a possi it is one possibility. Look, there are a few possibilities that could happen. We could decide to do it that way. We could decide to let them litigate. We could decide to send them to the, to the zoning board. We can decide to do, um, I guess the other thing would be a change of zoning. Those are essentially the four options that we're going to discuss next, at our next meeting. Um, I should have said that it is a possibility that this is coming to you, not that it is coming to you necessarily. So that was my misstatement. Okay, I, I, I uh, well, we, you can see why we're very concerned uh, listen, about something it. popping out. No, I understand. Yeah. Um, it. Listen, we, we all understand your concern. Uh, well, we were told, oh, you think something's going to pop out of the oven here, and we believe it is going to pop out, okay? And, and, and we don't want it to pop out. And let me tell you a why we don't want it to pop out. We, in, in we group of neighbors who are, are getting together to discuss, the, to discuss this project, we are not opposed to affordable housing. Matter of fact, we did not think that a special master would in any way give us, a, in Glenwood, a worse deal than this monstrosity that they're building complete with a fire pit on the roof and balconies looking, up, looking out over us. Um, we did not think we could possibly get a better deal than that, even at the 62 units. Um, what we, you are our leaders, and we are counting on you not to facilitate this development with a few less units, but to do something different. We, you are, we are talking about ruining this, this neighborhood, completely changing this neighborhood for 10 measly affordable housing units, 10 for 10 units, and they're only going to last for 30 years, okay? I've lived in my house for over 40 years. Why are we ruining a neighborhood for 10 housing units for 30 years? Uh, couldn't we do something else? How about put in the Summit Medical Group building and build 10 units of affordable housing on top of it? Fine with us. If, you, if the town needs to give some sort of tax incentive or something like that um, uh, to the developer, let's look into that. Let's be creative here. Let's, let's if we're, let's handle the affordable housing situation in a way that doesn't provide all of this excess density, six to one excess density. Fine for the 10 units. We don't want the other 52. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, Marilyn Respect, and I know I live in Hank Ferris, Milburn. Uh, I'd like to say that I'm really glad that you got the clock, because the first item I have on my list was um, having a consistent approach to the two-minute rule for audience members at the last meeting. Uh, one of the speakers spoke for 11 minutes. So, great idea of the clock. Second item I have is um, the Maplewood Township Committee has unanimously passed a resolution calling for President Trump to resign <laughs> and for Congress to consider his impeachment. So I'd like to propose that he'll return. Okay, uh, I realize that this topic was taken off the agenda today, but I want to jump the gun and get some thoughts out there. This has to do with the uh, downtown Melbourne Development Alliance. I uh, attended a meeting last week. Um, I think I might have been the only resident there that wasn't a uh, merchant, but in any case, and I was pleased that um, committee woman Rosenberg was there. Um, I question the effectiveness of this organization. We're spending a significant amount of money, and I don't believe we're getting the value that we should be. Uh, I got my hands on a copy of a recent contract for the executive director, and as a resident, I'm appalled that this instrument was accepted and signed by the outgoing board. This is not an employment contract. It's a promise of employment. And I have to say, you know, I was in corporate America for 35 years. I was a vice president of a Fortune 100 company. And I didn't have an employment contract. Only the most senior executives in my corporation did. Per this contract, the only reason the director can be fired is if the funding for the DMDA is reduced by 25% or if the DMDA is disbanded. No allowance for performance and there's a three weeks of vacation. Most new full-time employees get two weeks. There's no stated number of holidays. Usually there's 10 to 12 uh, and there's nothing stipulated so I guess you could take unlimited holidays. And the contract mentions at will. Now, New Jersey is an at will employment state, but the way this contract is worded, it, it at will appears to only apply to the executive director, not to the township or to the DMDA. This should be a two way street, but that's not how it's worded. Seriously, who, who signs a contract like this? What justification did the outgoing board have to increase the executive director from part time to full time? at more than double the salary. Is there a significant increase in responsibilities? What were her responsibilities previously? And what are they now? And why did the outgoing board sign a two-year contract? Is it binding? I question, I'll finish my thought. I'll question the legality, and even more, I question the ethics of what happened here. Thanks. Deborah Nevis, 65 Millwood Road. I just wanted to uh, voice my full-throated support for BB Shearer's suggestion of putting in uh, 10 affordable housing units um, at Woodland Road and some SMG office space and jettisoning the idea of, six, of 52 other luxury apartments. Um, to that end, I had a question. I don't know if you guys can help me in how to word this. But my understanding in reading the ordinance for the B3 zone is that there's no density requirement that currently exists in that ordinance, meaning that it states that it can have apartments on the second floor over commercial space or retail space, but there's nothing that designates what that density would be. So I don't know how to ask you this, something along the lines of, is there a way to amend the ordinance to get some kind of density requirement into it? Um, but just for example, across the street from Chatham Woodland Road is uh, the Short Hills Terrace Apartments. It's an R8 zone. There's a density requirement in there, which is no more than 14 apartments per acre. So I guess my question is, could there be an amendment to the B3 ordinance that would designate some kind of density? Well, yeah, I, I have to admit I'm not familiar with the density in the B3 ordinance. There isn't. I have to 
take a look at that. But I think if there is something lacking in the zoning ordinance that ought to be there, the answer to the question is yes, the township committee can take it up, gets reviewed by the planning board to make sure that it's consistent with the master plan and then could be adopted. I mean, theoretically, that's the answer is yes. Okay. I mean, right now, what it, it has, you know, side and rear setback, building coverage, it has a floor area ratio, ratio, lot coverage, building height in feet, and building height in stories, but there's nothing in terms of density. Mm -hmm. it, I, I presume it, pres I mean, I don't know this, but it might presume that would be no residential, which would be why there would be no density. Well, it allows for um, apartments so, over, so, over a commercial yeah. or retail yeah. space. Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll have to talk to the planning. Okay. Would you be that. able to respond if I come back to another meeting? Just yeah, we'll ask the follow up. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Why don't you leave your question mm -hmm. so we have this? Sorry. Why don't we have the documentation that has the full question so we can? Oh, I don't. I just mm -hmm. set it off the top of my head. It's it's yeah. in the yeah. ordinance. Okay. It's in the zoning law. Okay. Thank you. I have okay, well, good evening, everybody. Um, Fran Feld, 948 Ridge Loop Road. Um, first, I want to praise the Boy Scouts. I was very impressed with their ability to work their way through the system. And um, I was very inspired by the work of the Boy Scouts and how they stayed within the system and they got what they wanted. Um, and I'm hoping that I will have as much success as a citizen here as the Boy Scouts have had. So thank you for being so inspiring. Um, I have come up here before, and I will not repeat tonight some of the requests that I have about the complete streets. But I do have one new thing. Since you have said tonight that you're going to be hiring a traffic consultant, you hired one. You have a traffic consultant, and they're going to have certain duties in certain places, I guess, where they're going to observe. I wanted to ask, well, I mean, they set up their observation points. No, we're going to task them with things. So you want to ask us to I task them with something, right? That's exactly correct. Okay, so Thank what do you, you want to ask? Giving me the correct language. So I would like to test them, if they could, with observing the traffic flow that would normally go, let's say, from the high school heading towards the end of Melbourne Avenue. Yeah, that's that straight shot, but watching how many of those cars divert and go down um, into the Washington neighborhood, down Rector, through the light on Main Street, and pass in front of my house on Ridgewood, and then the ones that come back the other way. Because part of this traffic calming that has unintended consequences, I think that's the correct term, in my mind, for what happened, nobody was evil, no one wanted to hurt Milburn, we're not going to accuse these people of being ignorant and arterial, but the unintended consequences of trying to calm the traffic on Milburn Avenue has been chaos on my street. On day, there are days sometimes when I work at home and I cannot believe what's going on on my street, and then there are times that you wouldn't even expect there to be so much traffic, like on a weekend. When there's nothing going on in the park, there's no games or whatever, and all of a sudden there's monster traffic on my street because the GPS systems are telling some group of people going somewhere, go down Milburn, you know, go down Ridgewood Road. So if the traffic consultant could check out how much traffic diverts from Milburn Avenue to Rector, across Main Street to Ridgewood, that would really be super. Thank you. To that point, Kit, I don't know if it's legal, but I, somebody sent me something where I it was in the Times. Yeah, uh, it was in the Times that could you could uh, could, we spell, close? could you could we close it to local traffic only? Yes, so no, that, that. Yes, they were. That was another thing. That I didn't want to. But right. but that's an interesting thing. I legally, I wonder if we could enforce something like that so that people. Only your right. You saw that on TV. Yes, the town of Leonia. It's an article about it. Had I saw it on TV. They right. were getting up and saying that something happened with the traffic there. Leonia. And that all the streets were 
flooded you know, for commercial traffic. I or just traffic. I don't know legally how, how we'd enforce that or if we could enforce that. Kate, do you have any thoughts on that? We'll look up the Leonia case to see how they did it so we don't slightly reinvent the residents and ser service people, too, because well, I just have one comment community. on that. If you're having a visitor, a grandparent, a sister, right. an Uber yes. driver, I do not see any way to close South Mountain to right. just residents. Yes. Um, we're not a gated community. It would, it's a pie in the sky wish. I don't see any way that could ever happen. We have too many ins and outs of our neighborhood. Yeah, there's one other practical option for you. There are a lot of towns in LA who pay high school kids to report fake accidents so ways the wrecks traffic. <laughs> 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 right, well, my next one maybe I had a better idea. Renting a little yellow school bus and putting it on with the lights outside <laughs> permanently in front of our homes all day. It's Ridgewood is a Then nobody has an accident. My name is Anne Hudson. I live at Free Factory Drive. Oh, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on what uh, Phoebe had just said about the 10 affordable apartments. Um, I actually happen to be a member of a Chabad that is now being refurbished. Their building is being refurbished. It used to be Don's and then uh, two at a time, and um, in order, and that that's in Livingston. And in order for it to go forward, twelve affordable houses had to be also constructed on that property. And um, so it's being constructed. A certain uh, individual is um, doing all the work and will be managing it. But those will be the twelve affordable houses that uh, or apartments that Livingston wanted to make this deal happen. So it, it can be done, and I just wanted to let you know about that. That it doesn't necessarily have to be part of a large development. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with that situation. Are we, you? We, the township litigated uh, <coughs> against the high rise, which was going to build people exactly. on that site with the affordable housing next door to it. Uh -huh. And when they went to Livingston to say that the synagogue would be coming in, Livingston said, that's fine, but we don't want to lose the 12 units. So we're going to require that as a condition of the, right. the balance of this project. Wow. I always thought it had to be in conjunction with a whole development, but it, it actually doesn't. So I think BB's suggestion about having the 10 apartments above, uh, you know, the Summit Medical Group is an excellent one. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kerry Schreiser, under the book. Um, I wanted to thank the new 2018 Township Committee um, for being very forthcoming with information tonight. It really feels like new start and I think the community really welcomes all that in terms of the information itself that has been difficult to perhaps get in the past. Um, I have a question about those great blinky blinky signs that we have in the crosswalk now um, on Whittingham and Melbourne um, and if there is any possibility with perhaps some of our complete streets money that hasn't been spent yet on things that we might regret later, um, we probably wouldn't regret throwing a whole bunch of money into safety at a lot of the crosswalks in our town, like on Melbourne Ave and the high school where kids are practically playing Frogger every single day, on Melbourne Ave on the way to the train station at Undercliff and other places where even if you stop for someone to walk through the crosswalk, there's nothing to say that the car next to you is going to stop. That happened to me the other morning. And I honestly, I felt guilty that I stopped. Because I stopped in the right hand lane on Melbourne Ave. The person to the left of me didn't. And a guy almost got run over. And I was horrified. And I actually followed the person all the way to Wyoming Avenue and screamed at them. Um, not the person who almost got run over. The um, but yeah, seriously. Um, you know, is there, under what circumstances can we get more of these very needed safety features that can add to the safety of our town without doing massive construction 
and massive disruption. It, it seems that these are the simple, easy things that we all talk about. That instead of spending millions of dollars, we could have put up a whole bunch of no left turn signs. Having some more traffic enforcement in different areas, and I'd also like to ask as a follow-up to the crosswalk, blinky blinky things, which I don't know the technical term of. Um, that works. There you go. Um, Mr. Alex, you know, under what circumstances would you order the police department to increase enforcement in different areas of our town that hundreds of us have been really begging for for over a year, year and a half, two years, and really hearing nothing in return? Well, I think um, to answer your first question about the police and um, Beacons. Beacons. That's correct. Um, I think there, you know, certainly. Um, there is the ability by the township to evaluate what intersections or what crosswalks, mid-block crosswalks, um, would be uh, best utilized by that. Um, and that's something we can do uh, throughout the year. Um, you know, obviously there's an expense with that, but, but we continue to, you know, um, and, and I don't know that you can <clears throat> sort of necessarily take money from, you know, complete streets and dedicating the bond ordinance to do that certain stuff. But, you know, I think we have money in other places that we might be able to do some of those improvements. Um, so, um, and certainly I understand the one in Undercliff is, is, that was sort of the decision point between Undercliff and, and, and Whittingham. So, I think that's an easy decision. Um, as far as the police department goes, uh, they have been asked to, uh, to do enforcement in some areas. And, and I reported at the Township Committee at one point about enforcement in the South Mountain area and that it was unsuccessful. Uh, and that there was nothing um, there in terms of uh, speedy and and or very little, um, but but certainly as we, we go throughout the year and, and we continue to talk to the police department based on the request of the citizens and the committee as a whole uh, to uh, to to see that certain things might be addressed, then we'll we'll, we'll certainly do that. Um, I don't know that you know um, again. They, they take a look, they evaluate, they, they go out there and they see whether there's issues as well. You know, not necessarily just based on um, the, the perception of the area. You know, they, they also take a look. I mean, I know that people don't necessarily, may not think that, but they're out there evaluating what the traffic patterns are, what people are doing out there, uh, whether there's speeding going on, whether there's reckless, you know, different circumstances. So, so they're, all, they're always evaluating too. So we go on that as well. Show it just quickly because I know my three minutes are because I need to do part of it. Um, under what circumstances would you ask them to do more we of have. that? We actually have. We met, with, we met with Chief Gilfeder. We told him you guys are begging for tickets. And he said that, you know, they're out there, but we did. We did. I don't want one. All due respect, I don't know that people in town are seeing it. It may, that may be at but times when nobody's noticing it. Ridgewood and Whittingham running stop signs. They could get tickets after ticket after ticket. After that was, ticket. And, that and was again, I'm not, I'm not sort of going to back and forth and, and right. there have it, but it, that was one of the areas that they did enforce and that I did report on at the meeting. But I think it's also an area that should be revisited. It was mostly yeah. South Mountain residents that were well, in breach. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I got into the specifics of where they're from, but it certainly should be revisited. Thank you. All right. Well, Fran, we'll give you the gavel. Harry Heller, 56 Byron Road. Um, to say that I'm stunned would be an understatement on both two parts of that. Removing the concrete. No question it needs to be removed, but that this decision is being made by the Township Committee and Mazer without coming back to the stakeholders. You're making the same mistake because there's a lot more than just removing the concrete. There's bollards that are needed on these drop-down curbs to protect pedestrians and to keep the cars out of the corners. Whether it's choosing concrete, whether it's choosing Belgian block, there's a number in a series of decisions that need to be made, and it really shouldn't start from up here at the Township Committee. I've referenced this document any number of times, and we'll just read something very briefly from it. The 2000 downtown master plan, not really a master plan, but a downtown plan, one-third paid by the DMDA, two-thirds paid by the Township Committee. You know, the names on here, 
and the people that participated in this from, you know, Elaine Becker to John Buckholz to Tom McDermott, um, and, and the entire town of the you know, committee, you're going back to, you know, Horvath, the Ned Tangway one time person, and the Sealback, Sandy Nippies, John Murray, tax assessor, Mary McNatt, uh, myself, Dan Baer, um, Tara Bradish, who ran the organization. We need to get this. You are, as someone said earlier, to make policy. Make policy. Establish focus groups, but have it with two of your people on it, two people from the plan group. Get it out of from up here at the podium. Ultimately, it has to come up to, to you. And this is less about the concrete, but more about the larger process and just something about arterial. Arterial is primarily, everybody's got the name planner next to them. All your architects from the plan are the planner. They're not a true planner. They're, they're a streetscape architect company. Wrong company, yeah, we can fault them. They're, they're the wrong people for the wrong job. They, they shouldn't have been here. We need a downtown revitalization company along the lines with the gentleman that, that came here to. Mm -hmm. But there's a woman at that company. There's a number of people. It's a very significant company. There's a lot of companies like that. I put out there in the, in the public domain a way to perhaps fund the combination again, DMDA money, and taxpayers, uh, downtown uh, township committee, and to get this into a organization, a group, uh, an ad hoc, a true ad hoc, not an ad hoc that was started by a prior administration that has paid town employees on the ad hoc that are only going to do what the town wants them to do. And you add a township uh, uh, chamber of commerce person, you have a DMDA person, um, it's not a true ad hoc committee. Uh, the DMDA was compromised. We're going to talk about the DMDA tonight. The budget is not on tonight. There's a place for it, but not as in the manner that it's composed right now. Um, what I would like to suggest is please go forward. Um, Alex knows, I know, he knows the county, yes, has to be part of this process to just take the concrete out. There's an agreement to maintain Milburn Avenue. There's a, a snow plowing agreement. There's a maintenance agreement. It's not going to be, as Jackie said, it's not going to be as quick as, as, as we think. Um, I endorse, please, with what you're doing, but make it inclusive. Make it that. It's not you telling us and giving us choices of what to do. Um, last, if you can just bear with me briefly, just the bollards, just from the safety. Um, Canoe Brook Road, it hasn't been brought up whether it's going to be closed just for something, for some future agenda. You've referenced any number of times with the easement indeed if it's been out of the public domain, the young lady hasn't been here uh, to ask. Um, if we could get at the next meeting, we're going to spend money. Complete Street's budget, how much have we spent? Yeah. $8.2 million. I'd like to know because as we decide how we're going to spend perhaps some of this money, I'm not committing to three votes to, to take in out the concrete, but let's find out how much we have left and what we can do. And Arterial, their contract, with all due respect, and, and I have it here in front of me, and it looks like the contract is over. We, mm -hmm. We've spent their money. It's one-third, 40%. They've spent 100% of their $1.112, $600,000, plus all sorts of other chain order um, kind of money. Survey someone mentioned earlier. There's been a survey out in the public domain for six months that has never been sent to the residents. It would be a tremendous thing to do, whether sent to the residents, whether it's at the, the mall, whether it's at the supermarkets, whether it's in the parking lots, the train stations, we know how popular the train stations are at election time. Um, there's all sorts of things that we can do, and I would just ask to include us in. Uh, if anybody would like a copy of um, this plan, I'm, I'm happy to show it, um, to, to give it. And in this plan in 1999, there was a time for those who've been around town long enough, there were no left-hand turns, as, as Richard referenced earlier, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You couldn't make lefts on Main Street. Then, then we put it into place. You couldn't do it from 4 to 6 or 7 to 9. Then we allowed it in full. This plan was done at a time when there were no left turns permanently, and it specifically says do not, it specifically says put the left-hand turns back in because that's part of the longer plan. And Sam, I, I heard you and, and I bifurcated, and, and I agree. But part of the longer, we need a real downtown expert and we, the downtown, I think, are willing to pay our fair share you know, to put the town back together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and last, um, I have commissioned by an architect engineer a downtown train station drop-off plan, traffic calming, Essex Street. It's 75% complete. I don't really know what to do with it. I know, thank you for giving me more than my, my three minutes tonight. What could I do with this? Sorry. I'm sure. But what can I do with this? This is a true plan by an architect, and it's a really nice. Can you 
give it to the planning board? I'd love to see it. I mean, yeah, I also want to see it, but, um, I'll get copies, so for everybody, something, I would... Whatever we're going to be doing next, we would include it. And this can be done separate and outside, and if it's just standalone, it's safe, it slows that traffic down in Essex Street, which is a four or five lane road. There might be some other people that want to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, you didn't answer when are we going to see the complete breakout of what's been spent on complete trees? I know you just well, you said, said for the next meeting, could you please have it? So we'll have is, it that it is. is that it? Is that it will be available at the next meeting? We'll, we'll have what we're able to at this point because there, you know there's still going to be negotiations regarding the last. Meeting. But what we've actually, well, been, I especially want to know with this last piece, which we tried to stop at Wells Fargo, that special little triangle that was built. Correct. I want to know exactly what was spent on that. That level. may not be available. Exactly. So when well, we will can only it? tell you what we've spent. We can't tell you what we're still negotiating. Oh, okay. The numbers right. are available. When will that I, I can't tell you. I, I, don't, don't, I don't know exactly when. I can't tell you. So I don't know. Negotiating after the time? Yes. Yeah, it's all done. What's your name? Okay. Uh, Alyssa Sutton, 75 Mountain View Road. Thank you. Okay, so since I'm up here and I have my zero minutes because there's nothing on the clock, <laughs> everybody sit back, relax, get some popcorn. <laughs> uh, I had the pleasure of being in downtown Melbourne. Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> that's a oh, really? I'm there. I had the pleasure of, as I am often in downtown Melbourne, and I videoed it. Um, it's on Facebook. I'll, I'm planning on sending everybody up here a copy of it. Uh, the fire trucks go into the center of town, middle of the day, completely stopped by the special on the race sidewalk parking to which the cars that were in the road had nowhere to go to allow these two fire trucks to pass. I, I was somewhat able to get into the street because everybody was at a halt. Now, I happen to have had family members die in a fire. When I see fire trucks completely stopped, I mean, we know New Jersey drivers are special and they somehow can't seem to get out of their own way. But I'm talking dead stopped. It, it's concerning. And then I didn't get to catch it because it got, finally when they got through, it couldn't make it, meaning the fire trucks could not make the left turn at Blue Mercury to head up Ultra Hills Road. There was a negotiation for this truck to go back and forth to make the turn. I, I know we beat this thing like a dead horse, this complete streets. I don't know the geniuses who designed this, but if we can't get an emergency vehicle to pass through town in the middle of the day when there's two trucks back to back I, and can't make a turn, I, I just don't know who we're waiting to die, to run over, to burn. I just don't know. But it, it's not a matter of it. It's just a matter of when. So I'm leaving you, this up to you guys because the next person who, who dies, unfortunately, in waiting for an ambulance or a fire truck, it, it's, I, I don't know how many times we're going to have to say it. So that's, I didn't make my 10 minutes, but thank you. Thank you for making it. Anyone else? It's awesome. It is. It's awesome. I have it on video. I have it on the uh, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye.